Athletic Association of Western Universities. That was, you know, predated the Pac-10, the Pac-8, the Pac-6, the Pac-2, the Pac-1. <laughs> <laughs> but a guy by the name of Daryl M. Hoff and Earl Schultz and Bill McClintock played pretty well to help them win. Uh -oh. And there's another one. And that's Patrick Christopher with seven points early. Now, these are two of the top three-point shooting teams in the Pac-10, but Arizona State is 0 for 5 to start the game, and California just made their second. They are 2 for 5. And that's the Herbs Index substitution, Trent Lockett, and also Jaron Schick, a senior, who's really done a nice job knocking down key shots against Arizona. He did so, but it's been by virtue of hard work putting in the hours in the gym. Schick. There it is. Drops in the first three. That's the first three they have made. It ties the game at 11. They're one for six as a team. Jaron Chip out of Fairfax High School the last couple of weeks, 9 p.m. Like clockwork. He's in, the, in their practice facility, knocking down jumpers. He didn't count the number. He just shoots until he feels good. And it's carried over into his on-court game performance. Jorge Gutierrez also in the game. This is Randall. Partially blocked and Borkin tried to grab it. A fine defensive play by Jaron Ship, who came out of nowhere to knock it to himself. Well, and also Ty Abbott, the way he flew on that closeout at Jerome Randall. He got a piece of the basketball and flustered him into an air ball. That's the kind of defensive intensity, focus, and effort you're going to need against Jerome Randall to keep his effectiveness down in this game. Both of these teams displaying great energy on the defensive end of the floor to start this game. Abbott misses Christopher there for the rebound. Ty, who's been so strong lately, closed out by Stanford because of defense. But he had an unbelievable game at Arizona last week. Christopher on the drive. Count the basket. Did they say charge? Charge. It's a charge. Yeah, yeah. It looked like one official was about to give the and one signal, but Patrick Christopher missed a couple of long bombs early. I think like two for three from long range. Now he's starting to put his head down, put the ball on the floor, and show that he is more than just a one-trick pony, that he can take it strong and aggressive to the hole. He got the offensive foul on that play, but he's got to continue to look for a driving opportunity. Mike Montgomery thought Eric Boateng slid over and committed the defensive foul. Boateng Boateng will come out of the game now, and in comes Taylor Rohde, a 6'8 sophomore from Phoenix, Arizona. Arizona State has never won a Pac-10 title. Big guy for Arizona State. A lot of down screens on both blocks, and then that morphs into flare screens at the elbows. Great movement on the part of Jaron Ship to free himself with that jumper. Where has he been? I mean, a nice defensive play on one end. He's knocked out his first two shots, and the Sun Devils have a two-point lead. You told me, see, before the game, it just feels so good since his freshman year. He started off with a 20-point game as a freshman, but to have an impact for his team here down the stretch in their quest for a Pac-10 championship has been so fulfilling for Jaron Ship as a senior. On the floor where his brother had so many great wow. moments as a Golden Bear. 20-point per game, Pac-10 player of the year, Joe Ship. Josh at UCLA, a tremendous player for the Bruins. He's feeling it, Steve. He is feeling it. Oh, my goodness. He is channeling the Joe Ship energy here in the first half. It's a five-point Sun Devil lead, their biggest of the afternoon. This is his own version of senior day, Jaron Ship. Boy, they've denied Randall. There's Gutierrez. Robertson. Nice rebound return. Yeah, nice rebound, but again, Rehart Kutzix has got to play tougher and stronger on the interior. One thing Herb Sindek really got on him about yesterday, that time allowed Theo Robertson to gain inside position for that offensive rebound. Will they go to Jaron Ship? He scored his team's last eight points. They get that innate ability to, to feed the hot man. Oh, hey, get to enter. Now he's trying to become the fireman, trying to cool off Jaron Ship. But Ship going to run through a myriad of screens set by Taylor Rohde, trying to free himself for a jumper. Trent Rocket. Left hand goes. Boy, Taylor. ASU cut up the defense that time. Yeah, nice job. Trent Lockett, the freshman out of Minnetonka, Minnesota. Has had its ups and downs this year, but has gained invaluable experience in the starting lineup and playing and playing crucial minute for Arizona State this season. Here's what Carroll wants to do. want a lot of movement in against the matchup zone. Randall in and out. Offensive rebound by Boykin. And Boykin did, did a great job. 25 points, 10 rebounds the first time these two teams met down in Tempe. But crashing the boards, finding the sweet spot, finding the openings in the matchup zone. 
Glasser. Short with the three. Boykin there for the miss. And it was Boykin's play inside that forced ASU to get their defense. Nice. To the interior, opening the lanes for Randall. And now we have a personal foul call. I think it's going to be a block foul. Looks like the official is going to pull the other direction. But it's an and one for Theo. Theo Robertson, who grew up in nearby Pittsburgh, California, De La Salle High School. High. Gets the bucket with the kiss off the glass. A lot as a freshman, but he's been coming off the bench this, and earlier this year was at the end of the bench. Yeah, I mean, again, the last couple of years, ever since his freshman year, his time has went down each preceding year. Now this year, the last couple of games, he has made a tremendous, tremendous contribution to the success of Arizona State, and nothing more fulfilling for a player than to be able to make a contribution. Great to be a, great, a good soldier and, and cheer your team on. You see what his brothers have done, Joe. Josh Shipp at UCLA, Joe that played right here at Cal. But you want to be a part of a winning, winning situation in games. And, and he's been that. A winner as he won a state championship at Fairfax High School in Southern California. This game is tied at 18. Robertson finishes that three-point play after the break. And Cal, a team that uses this few by offensive. Offensively by knocking down jumpers has done a nice job taking the ball to the basket strong offensive rebounds by Jamal Boykin And their defense has been pretty solid with the exception of Jaron Ship freeing himself for some open looks at the basket Mark Curry Sanders fries in the game defensively trying to stop and slow down Eric Botain who scored only one bucket Ship That's a shot clock violation California's defense marvelous Switching, defending, making sure they didn't get in the lane. Well, they know this is primarily a three-point shooting team. As we talked about, 44% of their field goal attempts are from the three-point line. Arizona State, so you've got to chase them off the three-point line, make them make a basketball play, another dribble, another penetrating move, step up, make that guy pass the basketball. Gutierrez with the dribble, giving it to Jerome Randall, almost pulled up, and then floats in the lane, gets it inside, and Sanders fries in his foul, and that's just a creative play by the point guard, the pocket point guard, Randall, through the defense and allows his big man to wind up at the free throw line. That's why how you amass over 500 assists in your career for Jerome Randall, and he had a pretty decent look as there was a defensive mix-up out, out top of the 2-3 matchup zone but decided to penetrate and get, him, get his teammate a better shot. Mark, Mark Curry Sanders Fryson on the inside. He suffered because of a bad back this year. Was out of, for a couple of weeks because he had a bad case of the flu. But Sanders Fryson has a good future. A junior from a South Korean Junior College makes one of two. Cal with a one-point lead. Well, he's going to be key down the stretch because he gives this team probably their only real physical presence. Jamal Boykin plays the five, but he's kind of in between finesse and physicality. Sanders Fryson, he's all about the bump and grind. Arizona State just two of nine from three-point range. Cal stays in that man defense. That time, Sanders Fryson lost his man. On the switch, he stayed with the outside player. And then Botang slipped in. Yeah, and a good find by, by, by Derek Glasser, who saw that Sanders Fryson had no vision of the basketball and just basically lofted the ball right past his ear inside Eric Botang. You gotta, you gotta find the basketball as you're retreating to find your man. You gotta take a look back. Sanders Fryson, good catch. A whistle and a foul. And Marcury Sanders Fryzen is fouled. When we come back, we'll tell you about one of the great moments in California and Arizona State history. That's next. It was all about the road team. And then Cal goes down to Tempe, wins that first game on the road back in January, 78 to 70. So, so the road team is not intimidated by playing on the other's home court. Boykin and Randall combined for 50 that day in Tempe, including making what was it? 20 of 29 shots. It was amazing. And Patrick Christopher, I think, kicked in 20 of his own. 20, 21 points of his own. So the big three really did a nice job carrying the load offensively. But I, I like the defensive intensity of both teams. Glasser with the floater. Off the glass. A beautiful kiss. His father is here today. Eric Glasser. 
Averaging 10 and a half points per game, and he beat Gal Cal on a game-winning shot as a freshman. But Cal going inside quite on, easily on, now on, on the Arizona State, State defense. Amande Amoki, Swahili for born in the evening, which he says is ironic because he was born in the daytime. But does a nice job using his strength to, to create some baskets and uh, create a bucket, then there's a foul out top. A look at the Pac-10 standings. We told you the importance. Cal can clinch at least a share of its first conference title since 1950 by beating Arizona State today in its final home game of the regular season. The Sun Devils' best finish, meantime, was their second and third years in the conference in 1979 and 80 and 80 and 81 when they finished second to Oregon State in 80 and second again to the Beavers in 81. But that's been it. A steal by Patrick Christopher. Good job, Botang. Christopher Amoki getting on the floor, getting down, getting dirty, going after the loose ball. As soon as the ball went on the floor and Botang dove for it, Derek Glasser turned to the official and said, Timeout. You, you don't have control. That's the hustle of Eric Botang right there. Getting himself on the floor quickly. He gets the possession for his, for his team, but I mean, you got to love the effort by the big guy. Eric Botang from England by way of Duke transferred to, to Arizona State and is really starting to to come into his own as a contributor for this Arizona State basketball team. Arizona State's fourth turnover. The Devils had only five at Stanford, including Herb Sendick was amazed the last 29 minutes and 32 seconds of the victory against the Cardinal. No turnover. I've never heard of that. Yeah, and a lot of that has to do with just how comfortable and stable Derek Glasser is as a ball handler. Monday Amoke, nice spin move, misses off the glass. Botang with a strong rebound. But again, attack the weak link. Glasser on Amoke out top. Amoke did the right thing, just couldn't finish off the play. They lob it low, and coming over to help was Patrick Christopher. That time, Botang had a little bit of an edge on Boykin. And Patrick noticed it and came from the weak side. Well, Patrick Christopher out of the Midwest High School, Southern California, Compton kid. He is playing with an edge. He's playing terrific defense. He's attacking the basket offensively, not selling for jump shots. They have found Ty Abbott, who's been the most dangerous Sun Devil offensively the last three weeks. 18 points a game over the last eight games for Ty Abbott. And we're talking about tremendous degree of difficulty shots that he has made in that stretch. Ah! That's a shot clock violation. Shot California, I don't remember a time this year where I've seen this kind of defensive intensity. He showed it in spurts against Arizona the last time out, even though the offense was, was the main impetus for that victory. But this is the kind of defense Mike Montgomery has been trying to get this team to play all season long. And again, usually it's fueled by great outside shooting. That has not been the case. They've done a nice job attacking the interior offensively and then just on complete lockdown at the other end. This is a matchup of one of the best offenses versus one of the best defenses. But California playing great defensively. Cal averages 78 points per game. That's among the best in the conference. Arizona State's defense only allows 58. The fewest points per game since 1949. 50 allowed by an ASU team. And quite honestly, a lot of it, you know, riding the wave of this senior day crowd here at Hostel Williams. Theo Robertson with a one dribble fade. And he knocks down points six and seven. He's been telling his teammates he's, on a, he's a freshman on that team in, in 06. Leon Cole that year they finished second. Pierre is back in the game as the point guard. Again, the, the two three matchup starting to find its rhythm. This is a defense much like the amoeba UNLVs. It kind of morphs and changes its composition as the game progresses. Randall misses the shot, and again he complains to the official that he got fouled. Second time he's complained about the aggressive defense of Derek Glaster. He cannot allow Glaster to get into his head if you're Jerome Randall. Jerome Randall, though, said the key was to play smart, and he had a scowl on his face. But Jerome Randall out of Chicago, Illinois, tough inner city here for Chicago. 
You know, maybe one of these guys that plays better with that scout. Abbott missing the three. Big rebound by Jaron Schiff. Then he loses the ball, and the foul is called. Well, I mean, just a great move by Jorge Gutierrez. He got the rebound, got his body in position, drew the offensive foul. We've seen tremendous intensity from both teams. One heck of a game for the Pac-10 regular season championship. And he has been on fire recently ever since they moved to the motion. Yeah, and you had a great finish off of, you know, last season in the NCAA tournament game, 20 points in that game. Nice job, nice job, his own stopping the penetration. They're now one of eight from three-point range. Check that. Randall. They're now two of nine, because Randall just hit one. Don't speak too soon, my friend. Jerome Randall left wide open. Right side of the floor, you got to get a hand in his face. He will shoot you out of the game if you're not careful. Cal had been scoreless the last six minutes. They were 0 for 7, and then Randall hit a big three to pull his team within one. Now, Cal led 40 to 33 at the half in the first meeting. Well, Herb Sendek very concerned about the point guard, Jerome Randall. Thrust himself into Pac-10 Player of the Year discussions and conversation along with Quincy Pondexter, Landry Fields out of Stanford. You got to throw him in there, especially if he leads his team to their first regular season conference championship in 50 years. Eight seconds nice. left in the shot clock nice. and Boateng with a nice feed to Jaron Ship. You got you to gotta work together. Can't we all just get along? You got to work together. <laughs> Boateng, nice job down in the post. He's doubled, but Jaron Ship doing a great job moving without the basketball finding that opening underneath the basket. We told you Cal led by seven at the half in Tempe. They're going for the tie with a three-pointer. A two could make it a one-point game as Randall gets it to Robertson. There's Jerome. Beautiful shot by Randall. Ain't it to one. Half time we go at Hot Stanford to the first Pac-10 title or conference crown, I should say, in 36 years. The last Stanford crown was in 63. Now trying to do it across the bay with his rival, California. What a marvelous coach Mike Montgomery is. And the Cal's had some good teams over the years. I mean, 69-70, they had four future NBA players and Phil Chenier, Charles Johnson, Ansley Truitt, Jackie Ridgell, and they were just 11 and 15, 5 and 9 in the Pac-8 at that time. Jason Kidd, Lamar Murray here. There he is. There's a man against the Getting inside and Jaron Ship leading his team with 12 points. This is his biggest game of the year. Jaron Ship, again, he has done a nice job contributing for this team. Clutch shots against Arizona in Tucson. The game you had last weekend. Robertson had a good there look at misses. Jared Ty Schick. Abbott. Jared Schick gets a hand on the basketball, tips it out front to Ty Abbott. Out! Look at the block by Amoki. What was it, born in the evening? Take that in the afternoon. <laughs> it's actually born at the dawn. I had it. Messed around. I got a, got a bone up on my Swahili. Born <laughs> at the dawn, but he was born in the evening, and he's swatting that until yesterday. I just believe every word out of your mouth. Was that my mistake? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Be careful. With the defensive intensity, which team can sustain it here in the second half? Now, another Amoki block, but Lockett stays with the basketball, drops it in to bring Arizona State to within one. This is a freshman, and what a freshman he is. Trent Lockett out of Minnetonka, Minnesota. Great high school program. They won a state title there. But the Arizona State, they've got to continue to attack the interior defense of Cal. Patrick Christopher! Cal's going to rely on the long-range bombing ability of Patrick Christopher and Jerome Randall. It's Al. But continue to attack the inside. Jamal Boykin at 6'8. Not a physical presence, not a dominating shot blocker on the inside. You can get good looks. Boateng staying with it. He took this program over. Jaron Chip has done a great job finding the openings. Little shot fake right here, little screen to screen action. Good back pick on the part of the freshman from the rocket. Here's up Jaron Chip. He has been. 
a major contributor offensively for Arizona State. All over the floor. A Motel 6, a sixth man of the game. It's Darren Kipp. Motel 6, proud sponsor of the Pac-10 Conference. We'll leave the light on for you. Where would they be without the Arizona State bench? They've outscored Cal's bench 20-2. to Kipp with 12. It's the only reason this game is even close. And Doug Tamaro, who is a fantastic sports information director in Pac-10 for Arizona State, he told me back in November, he said, Ship may not start, but he said, watch for him in the second half of the season and second half of games. And, Doug, you were right on about Mr. Ship. Well, I'll tell you what, I mean, most guys in his situation playing 30 minutes a game as a freshman, the third most in Arizona State history behind you know, Ike Dago and some other guys, would have transferred by now, would have left and tried to find a better situation for themselves. He has stuck it out, and now it's paying dividends for him. Randall can't get the floater. Boateng rebounds, and then knocks down Boykin. Good no call by Scott Thornley underneath. Good job by Boateng to hold that pivot foot just barely. Trent Lockett strong to the hoop, misses, and a foul will be called against Theo Robertson. That's his first. A reminder to our fans watching our Cal ASU men's game. We've got a terrific women's game coming your way with UCLA against Oregon. Dixon against Lilly, and that's two top scorers in the Pac-10. Of course, Stanford has the lead in women's basketball. They're 16 and oh, their only loss to the best team in America, Connecticut. And you can see how far out in front they are. UCLA having a strong year, so is Cal. But there's Stanford alone at 16-0. Another great year for Tara. Yeah, Nikki called the other coach of UCLA. Going to have to try and slow down Paul Westhead's hurry up and shoot offense that he popularized at Loyola University with Bo Kimball. Hank Gathers and with the Denver Nuggets going about 140 points a game. Marcus, did you know that we just saw Arizona State's first free throw attempt of the game? Yeah, they did shoot. Uh, they shot, they shot one in the first half against Stanford the other night. Good defense by Ship, and he seals his man off for the rebound. But it's a concerted effort by Herb Sendak to take the ball to the basket by the Sun Devils. When you don't have a shot blocker on the inside, you can make some things happen if you're aggressive going to the hole. Here we go again. Get to the hole. Get to the hole. Get to the hole. They'll be back at that free throw line. Well, Marcus, let's take a look at your picks for the all pac 10 team. This is tough because they only gave me five. It's going to be 10 on the all pac 10 team. They only gave me five. I don't know why I get the discounted version of the all pac 10 team, <laughs> but here it is. Quincy Pondex and Landry Fields, two no-brainers, Jerome Randall. Another one, I think, Ty Abbott over the last eight games, 18 points a game has played his stuff into it. And then that last one, Clay Thompson, was more difficult because he's had his moments up and down in the Pac-10 this year, but I, I think he's deserving. No Isaiah Thomas. No Nick Wise in your that, top five. That's those other five. That's that, 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 that <laughs> other five. You consider all those guys on those other five. And Nick Wise definitely consider. I mean, Derek Williams, his teammate in Arizona, will get some consideration. Boateng, a 60 percent foul shooter, just inside of that. Jeremy Green from Stanford. I can't leave him out. He will be all Pac-10, one of the top 10 guys in the league. Gutierrez back in. He's a fine defender. Matchup zone principles. Guard the ball, match up with a man in your area, and most importantly, be aggressive. You got to eliminate the indecision. Christopher. One and done for Cal. Glasser reading that floor as he brings it across the timeline. Boateng trying to pull his way up and has it stripped and a three-second violation against the senior Eric Boateng. Great. That is ASU's eighth turnover. Good discipline on the part of Mark Curry, Sanders, Fryson, who doesn't always show it, but the big guy just held his ground, didn't bite on the shot fakes by Eric Boateng. He got some help from Jorge Gutierrez on the double team, and they forced Boateng into the turnover. Boateng and Glass are both out. McMillan comes in to run the point. He'll be at the top defensively, along with Trent Lockett, and they'll go with Rody, Ship, and Abbott. Important time in this game for them to stay close with Glasser and Boateng on the sideline. Cal doing a nice job. Nice job moving without the basketball. And a good find by 
Now Curry Sanders twice, and big guy can pass the ball. Reminds me of kind of a, a poor man for Raymond Tisdale, the big left-hander who step out, knock down medium range, jump shots, great vision as a passer. Abbott Wolf defended by Patrick Christopher. Slid past him nice. with the left hand. What a shot by Abbott. Again, concerted effort to attack the basket on the part of Arizona State. Cal does not have a shot blocker that can contest on the inside. Randall got his man in the air. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. Patrick Christopher on a nice long drive to the hoop. And Patrick Christopher has made the adjustment in his game. Settled for long range jumpers at the start of the first half, start of the second half, but there is gravy on the inside for Patrick Christopher. And there was some perspiration on the floor. One of the officials said they wanted to get that wiped up. Pointed out by Herb Sendek. Aggressive defensive basketball, both ends of the floor. You see Christopher right here trying to make just a shove on the backside of Ty Abbott, which means Ty Abbott displaying tremendous body control to finish and avoid the offensive foul and finish with the left hand after that shove. And with Glasser and both playing both in the sideline, and I think Abbott will be a little more aggressive. Well, you got you to gotta keep your guy in front of you if you can. You can't go for the shot fakes. You cannot allow Arizona State to continue to penetrate the paint like that. And Abbott taking over with the two seniors on the sideline. Got to force him into contested jump shots. It's just too many good looks in the painted area. I mean, they're difficult shots, but they're good looks for Arizona State. Abbott has had some brilliant games against California, a career-high 30 two years ago, 25 in a double overtime game at California as a freshman. And that ball is knocked out of bounds. Timeout on the floor. Ty Abbott doing it with Glasser and McMillan and others. And Glasser and Boateng back on the floor. Jorge Gutierrez cuts through that defense. Jorge Gutierrez, a man out of Chihuahua, Mexico, normally known for his defensive intensity. Nice dribble drive, take and finish. The hot devil, Ty Abbott, getting a break. He's on the sideline. And see, that's one of the more difficult accomplishments against this matchup zone, to be able to dribble drive all the way from the perimeter and get to the rim uncontested. Breakdown defensively for ASU. Again, I told you the key, who can sustain defensive intensity. Shot clock at four. At three, at two, McMillan hits the three-pointer with one second left on the shot clock. Jamel coming through for his basketball team. It's put in serious hours during the offseason, really tightening up that form on his long-range jump shot. Great rotation, great release. They stay in that matchup zone. Crowd quiets a bit. Great, great thing is great man movement on the part of Cal against the There's a man movement. Oh, what a shot as He's got a chance for three. The man movement without the basketball. You attack it just like you're attacking a man to man defense. Jorge Gutierrez right here. Now, Jerome Randall, I mean, wow, real close to a traveling violation, but that's Mark Curry, Sanders, Price, and. Firing a pass on the inside to the cutter. Great vision by Price. And, and hey, you get hit, you throw it up and hope for the best. And the best happened that time. It sure did. Yeah. And good here is at the free throw line trying to make it a five point Cal lead. You see this black thing up here? That's a horseshoe. That's a horseshoe. And on his jump shot. Spent a lot of time working out after practice yesterday with another freshman, Bok Bok, out of Simi Valley, California. And those two guys just kind of working on their games after practice ended after everybody had left. One of two almost tipped in. Botang rebounds and gets it to his point guard. Seven and a half to play. Arizona State down by ten. That's the Jaron chip. 12 points so far in this game. Can he continue to be an offensive force for Arizona State? They are struggling to find good shots. Abbott misses. Ship rebounds. Jaron back up and in. Jaron Chip. Jaron Chip is playing out of his mind. 14 for the senior. In this game, the last couple of weeks, all the extra work that he has put in has really paid dividends. 
but they have to find something from outside. This is the best three-point shooting team in the league, and they are three for 18. But, then, but again, that, that tells you just how well Cal has played. It's not like they've had a lot of uncontested shots here over the last five or six minutes, maybe, maybe early in the game. McMillan with the steal, and they say it will be a hell ball situation. Jamel was rolling the ball trying to hold on to it. Did they say it's a timeout? That Jamel had possession? I think one of the, one of the officials saw Derek Glasser signaling for a timeout. I they, saw an official with two thumbs up like held yeah, ball. I mean, it, you know, they had possession. And the ball was yes, called. They're, gonna, they're going to assess the timeout. Derek Glasser did signal for the timeout. You know, instead of allowing Jamel McMillan here to just be tied up, you get possession of the bat. There's Derek right there. There's Glasser. Timeout. Timeout. The the so there's the two the thumbs up right season. there. Well, we're proud of the Conference of Champions, not only what they've done on the athletic competition, but also in the classroom, like Trent Lockett, basketball player at Arizona State, 3.6 GPA as a freshman. He's already in the Barrett Honors College at ASU. Lauren Boyle in swimming and diving, a 3.5 all-academic second team last year, and she qualified for the 2008 Summer Olympic Games in 4x200 freestyle relay for New Zealand. I drove by that Barrett Honors College down in, in Tempe. Just got a headache from all the knowledge. Just look at all that. My head just got hurt. Just, just throbbing. Just well, we can't wait for the Pacific Life Pac-10 tournament. If the season were to start right now, Arizona would face UCLA. The winner of Oregon, Oregon State would face Cal. Stanford would face Washington. Washington State would face Arizona State. But we've got another weekend to go. Yeah, I mean, but that's it. You say season start, right? That, that's the real season. But the winner of that, that tournament Gets the automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. McMillan slithers through. Steal by Gutierrez. Steal back by Abbott. Ah! Wow, love the energy. That is terrific energy at both ends. Steal by McMillan. Abbott coming back. Jumping into the passing lane. We saw so much on that player. Here's McMillan with the penetration. Misses on the first shot. Abbott steps into the passing lane. He's going to miss that. But then Botang, great rebound. Oh, watch Gutierrez. Gutierrez at 6'3". No, 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 big guy. <laughs> this guy's had an amazing year. He's another one of the most improved. Marcus, he only made 14 field goals all last year. He had 11 alone in his last game in 11 attempts against Stanford. 11 for 11. For Eric Botang missed on that. Trying to try to put down on this lead. But he's another guy that has put in the put in the hours and the weather up. You had a pretty good game bit. back in 76. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty good. 11 for 11. Here against Cal, not here. It was at Carmen Gymnasium. Botang misses two. That hurts. So, so that aggressive play by Jorge Gutierrez keeps Cal in the lead keeps this lead this pushing up by nine points instead of being a seven point lead it's still a nine point lead because of that aggressive defense and the missed two free throws yep. Horkin. seniors working together trying to get this thing done on this saturday afternoon in berkeley trying to get this pac-10 championship thing done regular season trying to get it done they're smelling it you can feel it and the crowd lifts them every time they get down. Patrick Crisp for a nice little draw and kick to Jamal Boykin. Ty Abbott, short with the three. Botang tips it to himself. Glasser still has not scored from three-point range. And that time we saw a glimpse of emotion and a little bit up down by Derek Glass, who's 0 for 4 from three-point range. But, but Patrick Christopher and Jerome Randall played those last two three-point shots as well as you can play them. All you want to do is contest, not foul. Just get on that shooter's hand and, and make yourself a, a menace, a nuisance when he tries to shoot the three. Nice. Leo Roberts, Senior. what a feed inside. Seniors, working together, trying to get it done. Leo Robertson to Jamal Boykin on that possession. Timeout as California has opened up their biggest lead. 13 points with just 444 to go. This place is going to go crazy because the Bears have not won a men's basketball title since 1960.
They came in with a half game lead on Arizona State. Three way tie for third between Washington, USC, and UCLA. I think Cal, Arizona State, and Washington are, are in if they can finish the job. Washington needs to beat Washington State today in Pullman. Yeah, Washington State, uh, you know, they're going to have to at least get to the Pac 10 championship round. I think Cal is in regardless. You know, you, you look at the Pac 10, they're eighth in RPI conference rankings right now. And there's been, you know, the conference is ranked eight with the average two and a half teams over the last 10 years getting into the NCAA tournament. And in terms of RPI, Cal should finish with about a 21 RPI. Last 10 years, 38 RPI has been the lowest team to not get into the tournament. So I think Cal is in for sure. And you were showing some, me some stats before the game of teams that had a low RPI, but leagues that still, BCS leagues that still got three teams in. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's happened as recently as a couple of years ago. Uh, I think it was the Big Ten got four teams in. They were ranked eighth in the RPI. So, you know, yeah, the Pac-10 is down in terms of those rankings. But all this talk about the Pac-10 tournament champion being the only team in the NCAA tournament is completely bogus in my mind. Arizona State needs a big bucket. Yeah. trying to set a screen for Glasser. They're going to chase him Glasser out toward the midfoot line. Three on the shot clock. Got to get it up. Jaron Ship misses. Rebounding was Lockett. And then he knocks down Gutierrez. No foul call. We have seen a physical game. Then Lockett showing the hop. Knocked down Gutierrez. Knocked down Taylor Rohde on that play. Which lodged the, just lodged the basketball. Another possession for Cal. Golden Bears have set their jaws defensively, and they have just been so tough against Arizona State's offense. Oh, oh look at the passes! Oh, hey, get the evidence. The no look number going left. Looking off the defender's right, firing it back inside to Jamal Boykin for yet another uncontested shot for Jamal Boykin on the inside. Boy, Lockett and Gutierrez really getting physical down in that paint. Look at this. There's got to be a foul there. <laughs> All scored over a thousand points in their careers at Cal. ASU with the basketball. Glasser still coming up empty. Yeah, and I tell you, Arizona State's been shooting about 65, excuse me, about 25 percent in the second half of this game after ripping the course for about 52 percent in that first half. So that gives you an idea of the kind of defense that Cal has played. The intensity that they have shown keeping the Sun Devil out of the paint has led to this big lead and them possibly getting their first Pac-10 championship in 50 years. Or, or, or first Pac-10 championship ever. Last time they won it was the Athletic Association of Western University. Four seconds left in the shot clock. Randall with the floater. No. Boykin with the rebound. Seniors. Hustle players making it happen. Cal has done everything well. They shut out Botang, who's coming off a career game against Stanford. They closed out their three shooters, who are just three for 21 in this game. A miserable three shooting afternoon for the Sun Devils. Their defense, and, and you know, it's one thing to shut down the three point shooters, but to keep them out of the paint on dribble drive opportunities has been even more impressive in my mind. Another offensive rebound. This time, ASU comes up with it. Cal by 15. He's got to pretty much go on a three-point barrage to get back in this thing. Robertson rebounds. Cal trying to put it in the deep freeze. They will use the clock. Jerome Randall, five foot eight inch senior from Chicago Hell. Franciscan High School and on just a terrific career over 1,700 points. Just the sixth player.